Google's DeepMind team are at it again. They've brought AlphaZero out of the cupboard, dusted it down, fired it up, and once more put it to work on the chessboard. And they've just published a new academic paper with some new games from AlphaZero. And I'm very grateful to the team at DeepMind for sharing the paper with me. So DeepMind have been collaborating with Vladimir Kramnik, former world chess champion, of course, and they've been investigating chess variants, exploring ways in which the traditional chess rules can be tweaked so that the game can evolve and refresh. So as they see it, there are two main problems with modern professional chess. One is that the depth of opening theory and opening preparation means that, that many professional games actually end while both players are still in their home preparation. And as a consequence, that can lead to many draws. In any case, there are a lot of draws because simply technique, uh, middle game and end game technique has become so refined as well. Of course, it's a moot point whether uh, the rules of chess need changing at all, but I'm going to put that aside because I think um, DeepMind's um, explorations and their findings are, you know, once again, very, very interesting, really fascinating. So what, um, what variants are they exploring? Well, they, they're looking at things like um, no castling, um, if you force stalemate, then that's a win. Um, pawns just moving one square, pawns moving backwards. These these kind of rule changes, and and they've looked at nine different variants using the machine learning skills of Alpha Zero playing plays against itself, and seeing how the stats compare in these new versions of the game with classical chess. So I'm going to start a series of videos looking at some of these rule changes. And, uh, well, I mean, there are some absolutely remarkable ideas on display uh, from AlphaZero. So I'm going to start with a really wacky variant. And this is great fun. Self-capture chess. So all the normal rules of chess apply, but with one added rule that you can capture your own pieces. Well, what possible benefit could that be? Well, let me just show you a few examples that were actually given by Vladimir Kramnik in, in uh, the paper, and you'll begin to get the idea. Uh, and this makes chess just so much richer. It's really interesting. So here, for example, uh, a fairly normal variation of the dragon. Um, but here, well, white play, very often you need to advance your h-pawn to attack in the dragon and exchange a play bishop h6 and attack down the h-file. But here, white can go on the offensive straight away simply by capturing its own pawn on h2. So we'd end up in this position with, well... Uh, a, a very natural and very nice attack on the h-file. Um, so there are many different openings that, well, really you, you shouldn't really consider, considering that uh, this rule is, is possible. That's just one little example of how strategy can change. But it's not just in the opening and middle game that one needs to be really alert. Have a look at this. This is absolutely fascinating. So have a look at this end game. So opposite color bishop endgame, where white's pawn stands on b7. Of course, this is just a stone cold draw in normal play. You can see this bishop controls the b8 square. That pawn simply can't advance, even if it could, even if you could win it. Well, the, the bishop would sacrifice itself. This is a simple win for white. So all you need to do is play the bishop to c8. And then on the next turn, you take your own bishop and make a queen, and it's game over. Okay, try this one as well. So here, 
Um, you can see in normal classical chess, this is a stone cold draw. You can see the position is completely blocked. The rook cannot make its way into black's position, neither can the king. Black just needs to wait around with the king. You just shuffle back and forth and it's a dead draw. But here, when you can capture your own pieces, it's rather different. For example, you could play your king in here and take this pawn and break through into black's position. So let me give you just an example of how that would work. So here, king e4, and the king goes back to e8. And now we just need to take that pawn. There we go, we've taken that pawn. And basically, you're in. Um, if king here, yeah, if king d7, well, you can, in this case, you, you have a winning king and pawn a game. I'll leave you to sort out the details yourself. So there are positions which were a you know, stone-cold draw. Actually, suddenly you have winning chances. Very interesting. So let me show you a game that Alpha Zero played against itself. And this also um, demonstrates some of the kind of incredible resources and, and ideas that are available in self-capture chess. So here we go. Alpha Zero against Alpha Zero. Self-capture chess. Well, for the first few moves, in fact, what we have is a completely normal game. I'd even say uh, quite a dull game, actually. Uh, well, maybe that's putting it too strongly. It's a wonderful Queen's Gambit. I like the Queen's Gambit with black. Um, it's a very standard middle game position with this fixed pawn structure. And nice development from both sides, as one would expect from Alpha Zero. We're not going to get anything uh, too wacky even in self-capture chess. So knight e4, the standard way to liberate black's pieces in this kind of queen's gambit position. So if bishop takes bishop, then queen takes, and that's actually absolutely fine for black with this nice knight on the outpost. Bishop takes, and then bishop takes bishop. So also a way of uh, yeah exchanging pieces and that helps black's position and the queen comes out and the bishop retreats to d3 and now well the queen can't do much on its own comes back to e7 and now white starts the traditional minority attack on the queen side although black is very solidly placed and has good coordination so actually it's difficult for white to actually get any great benefit from this minority attack. And the king comes back to g8. Rook b1, rook c8. Yep, so it's possible if the pawn advances to b5 that one could play c5, a typical passing move, and then you get play on the c file. So black is absolutely fine here. I mean, I would say that this position is roughly level. But watch what happens in a moment. Knight f4, knight e8. Yep, that knight coming around to d6. So often a beautiful square in these kind of structures. Looking at some key squares in the position. And here as well. So again, I think the position is basically about equal. Bishop f5 attacking the rook. Rook c1, queen d8. Queen b2, bishop e4. We're going to get to the critical moment in the game fairly soon, but there's some shuffling that goes on first. Rook a7, mysterious move. Uh, prophylaxis against a potential b5. Nope, just a bit of a shuffle. And now the queen comes out. Yeah. Yeah, in human chess, I would say, well, there could be potentially a bit of a nibble against that pawn, and you never know. G5, G4. And the rook comes over. That's 
where it likes to be on the semi-open file. And now the action starts. You've been very patient waiting for it, but here we go. Knight is pushed back to d3 and black takes. And now black goes for it. g4. It's funny, alpha zero playing against alpha zero. It's, it's uh, I don't know what to call them. Alpha zero one, alpha zero two. No, it's the, the same entity. Very strange. So that's taken. Now, white is well coordinated enough that in, in normal classical chess, after, say, a queen takes, then the queen, for example, would be able to just slide over and sit on f3, and actually black would simply damage the pawn structure, and I, probably, well, white would be absolutely fine. But here is the idea. Rook e6, the queen comes over, and now... You've probably anticipated already what black's next move is. Yep. That rook is about to capture its own pawn on h6. Voila. And that sets up a threat of checkmate. Hmm, what does white do about that? Well, don't panic. Queen f3. Queen h1. Hmm. End of game? No, not the end of the game, because king takes f2 is possible. So now we've got a situation where, let me see, pawns are... Uh, no, white is a pawn up, actually. But white's structure has been rather damaged. That queen is now on prees. The queen goes back check. King e2. Rook e8. Be nice for black to get some pressure here, but rook h1 forces some exchanges. And actually, white is doing absolutely fine here. So instead of putting the queen back and allowing an exchange of rooks, black gives the queen. So now we have a situation of two rooks against a queen. But because black's king is a little bit exposed and yes, black's rooks are split, then it seems to me that white has the advantage here. Black has to be a bit careful. So queen f4 attacks the knight and starts perhaps to look at attacking black's king. Knight e4, bishop takes, rook takes, and now queen b8, check. So the king steps up, and queen takes b7. I think it's absolutely clear that white has the advantage now, because... The queen is just in amongst the pawns and they're looking weak. So black is struggling to hold this one. Queen takes a6. Another one falls. Rook takes g4. King steps back to protect this pawn. Rook h1 check. King f2. And now the rook goes back to g6 looking to hassle the king. b5. Now if that's taken then the queen could recapture, and then you can see that the d5 pawn is weak, and of course there's the passed a pawn to deal with. Um, I think in, in that position, black is certainly struggling. Um, good, some good chances, but watch what happens now. This is incredible. Rook h2, fair enough, looking to attack white's king. And now b6, so critical moment in the game with these two passed pawns on the queen side. Rook g2, well, it looks like black's counterattack has come through because after the check, if the king goes this way, then it's getting forced to the side of the board and, well, white would then be on the critical list. So what did white play next? Well, the only other option is to take its own pawn. Fantastic. Rook b2 still looks rather dangerous with those rooks potentially hassling the king. a5. It looks like white is simply ignoring this attack. But well, watch what happens. Rook b3 check. We don't want to go that way, but instead 
we can take our own pawn. Absolutely beautiful. So sometimes it pays to have a bit of extra room for the king. So this rook comes behind one of the pawns and the king goes in. B7. One of the pawns drops and white makes a new queen. Well, after that little flurry, in fact, although white is a queen for a rook ahead, it's a theoretical draw because in this position, well, white can actually make no progress at all, even without that deep pawn. It's simply a theoretical draw, uh, a well-known position. Uh, so yeah, after after all that fun, uh, a draw. Uh, but hopefully that gives you a little taste of the possibilities that arise in this self-capture chess. And as uh, Vladimir Kramnik said in in the the the, the paper, he said um, he would highly recommend this variation of chess for those that value beauty in the game on top of everything else and and i i agree i think this is one which listen i'm not saying this is going to take over the world of chess but i think as a, a very uh easy rule to implement then i think self capture chess has that going for it and it certainly is often very very beautiful anyway there'll be more coming from this paper from deep mind and more chess variants uh very soon and I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching.